Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3A of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 74 and the question is number 24. Now to be honest, I'd say this is probably the most challenging one we've come across so far. But all the same, a lot of it is just manipulation formula, which I, to be honest I don't like because I don't, I don't really see the use of it. But anyway, look, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So what we're asked in the first part is that we're given that, I'm just going to leave out, I'm going to not leave out anything, sine squared a plus cos squared a. Given that, we're asked to show that sec squared a is equal to 1 plus tan squared a. And if you look it up in your book, you'll find that sec squared is equal to 1 over cos squared. Now, first thing I'll say is this that in school, I always used to fret about these things because I never knew how to start them. That was the first thing. I've since realized how to do them. So that that's uh, that I suppose that maybe it will uh, convince you that they're, you're able to do them, but this the the main thing I should say to you is this: fairly even cert, you, there's no need to fret about the fact that you mightn't be able to manipulate these formulae. As far as I'm concerned, it's not not a big deal. If you can do part B of this question, then you're absolutely flying it, and this is just this is kind of trivial. But look, I'll show you how to do it, and I'll tell you how you should look at it either way. Now look, we're asked to find something with sec squared. And sec squared, we're said, is, is equal to 1 plus tan squared. So what's tan? That's a sine squared over cos squared. Okay? And we know that sec squared is also a cos squared. So basically what we're trying to do is get cos squared below the line on both occasions. So how do we do that? We just, we just do that. We divide everywhere by cos squared. And what do you get? You get tan squared plus 1 is equal to sec squared. Simple. Now, <laughs> it's simple to look at it like that, but it isn't so simple when you're doing it. Like I said, don't fret about it. I can tell you for a fact that the person who first did that manipulation didn't do it as quickly as I just did it there. But, like I said, once you know these things or how to go about doing them, they're actually not too bad. Anyway, let's get on to the meat of the question. So it says, a projectile is projected from a point P on a horizontal plane with initial speed of 35 root 5 at an angle alpha to the plane. And we're told the distance or where it strikes a small target. So the first thing here is to draw, um, let's say this is our velocity vector, magnitude 35 root 5, like so. Alright? Now, of course, this isn't in one of the planes or one of the unit vector directions, it's in two of them. So it is a resultant vector made up of adding two component unit vectors, namely these two here. So, call this angle here alpha. We need to resolve this vector, which we've done 100 million times this stage. So that's equal to 35 root 5 times the sine of alpha j hat. And this is 35 root 5 times the cosine of alpha i hat. And therefore u is equal to u sub x i hat plus e sub y j hat is equal to 35 root 5 cos alpha i hat plus 35 that's 5 35 root 5 sine alpha j hat as like that all right so that's something we've done loads of times i just wanted to do it very explicitly now I'm going to rub it out because I'm going to write it down again. So what I want to do is go straight into our u vast. x-axis, y-axis. And let's fit in the pieces that we know. We know this one here was equal to 35 root 5 cos alpha. This one, 35 root 5 sine alpha. The accelerations are as follows, the time is as follows. And we're also given that the displacement is 350i hat plus 210j hat. So in the same way as the acceler or the velocities, we can write that. Sorry, 350 and 210. Alright. 350 and 210. So, where do we start? Well, I'll tell you where we start. We start by getting getting um, 
an expression for the distance here and getting a time for it, getting an expression for time. So we know this is 35 root 5 cos alpha t because that's ut plus a half at squared and since a is equal to 0 that's what we're left with. So as a result, we're able to get an expression for t. All right, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to fret over this. So t works out to be, let me see now, 10 over root 5 times uh, cos alpha. Like so. So we're doing, we're doing okay so far. Now also we have an expression for the distance. Well, we need we have an answer for the distance, so we need an expression for it. Now it's going to be a bit a bit hairy to write. So look, if you have your copy book, write them down. You want write them down, or else just just go back in the video. So either way, we use the same formula: ut plus a half at squared. That's ut minus we'll say nine point eight one over two times t squared. We know what t is, so we'll, rub, we'll put that in. So we get 35 root 5 sine alpha times 10 over root 5 cos alpha minus, uh, we'll leave that as g, I'll leave that as g, so that becomes back a plus again. g over 2 times 100 times root 5 over root 5 cos alpha. Where? So that becomes, that's not root 5, that's just 5. And we know that's equal to 210. So let's cancel what we can. 10, we're going to 100, 10 times. And we're left with 350. Sign over cost is 10. plus 10g over cos squared 210. Now here we get more manipulation of formula. If you can do it, you can do it. If you can't, it's not a big deal. But look, this is 10 over g. We'll say that's equivalent to this. So that's equivalent to Because remember, 10 or sec squared is 1 over cos squared. So I'm just going to rewrite this. So that's 10g sec squared alpha. All right. So let's rearrange that again. We'll divide across by 10. Uh, minus all right is that all right I just have some notes here I'm gonna have a look at all right yeah I think we're doing okay so far so the next thing we need to do is uh, convert the sec squared into something with tan. Now the reason we need to do that is as follows. We want to get a quadratic in order to get the value for alpha. And sec squared is equal to 1 plus tan squared, because we did that in part 1. Okay, so what we're starting to see is a quadratic in tan. So we get 35. And finally, I'm just going to do this in a different bio again. So we're going to get, I'm going to say t now instead of tan squared. It's just easier, or in t instead of tan, so it'll be... And it'll be 21 plus 9.8, is that right? No. 
All right. So, yeah, we're doing okay so far. So I'm just going to basically get rid of a lot of stuff up here so I can start again. You know, like I said, this was this is reasonably tough now, to be honest. It's just the algebra, really. All right. So we need to solve this. Uh, we're going to need to use the formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So I'm going to do that again. So it'll be plus 35 plus or minus something over 19 points. What is it now? 9.8. Yeah. So b squared minus 4ac. We'll do that. So that's 35 squared minus 4 times 9.8 times 30.8. That's a positive number. Root that. And that is 4.2. Giving us two positive answers. So 35 plus 4.2 divided by 19.6 is equal to 2. And 35 minus 4.2 divided by 19.6 gives us 1.57. All right, so let's check if that's right. Yeah, and both of those are right. So they are the tan tan of the alpha. So what we're basically sorry, I'll just write this explicitly. We're saying here that tan alpha is equal to two, and tan alpha. Like so. All right. What's next? Are we asked to find anything else? Uh, find two possible values for tan alpha. Yes, and the time of flight in each case. The time of flight in each case. All right. So what I'm going to do is find out what alpha is. In this case, alpha is equal to, and alpha is equal to. So inverse tan of two, or inverse tan of 1.57 first, is 57. Let's see, yeah, 57 degrees. And inverse tan of 2 is 63 degrees. Okay, now if we look back up here, we have two, t two expressions for or we have an expression for the time, so, and we also have now two angles. So let's plug those in, and to get the final piece of this, I know it's deadly long, but anyway, so this here it's 10 over root 5. And 10. Oh. Like so. Let's plug those into the calculator. Eight point two on that side. And we're also going to get 9.8 on this side here. Are they correct? Just let me check this now. So we should have 10. Oh, I need to have it in third form. I have an answer here, but it's in third form. Just going to give me a second, please. So 9.3. Yeah, that's correct. And 10. Oh, wait, one of those is incorrect. Sorry, this is correct here. And the other one, the other one is out by a small bit. Uh, I'm not going to really worry about that because remember I put in 57 and it was like there's 57 plus point da 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 whatever it was. So if you put in all the little little significant figures or leave it as a surge, you'll get the correct answer. So yeah, there are the two of those. Thanks for watching. Please pass on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And I'm sorry that was ridiculously long.